quite so dark. Let me see if I can back out and see a bit more. Um, you can see it's actually a fairly large level. Uh, very similar to your modeling tools, you, know, you should be able to drag assets from the project pane over there and drop them into the scene and start positioning them wherever you want. So it's very designer friendly uh, as well as very coder friendly because behind the scenes there's a lot of scripting capabilities. Uh, a key element that we offer is there's this game view inside the editor. And you can do live previews of your content right inside of the tool. And so let me just show you that real quick. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of Command P, but you'll notice the play button is down to press. And it's actually running the game content inside of the editor here. And this is kind of the initial load scene of the game. And it's got my player. Now, I'm in the editor today, and what we've done is we've just implemented mouse controls. I'm just clicking on the joystick to move the character around. Um, one of the things that we have for the iPhone today that's not yet done in development, and we're going to have it for, for Android as well, is called the Unity Remote. And um, if anyone wants to see this in action afterwards, I can do it uh, with, with an iPhone build. It's an application you're going to install on your device because you know, I can sit here and I can't quite touch my monitor and have it do anything or tilt my computer. But it's an app that you put on your device and as long as it and your editor machine are the same wireless network, you're going to be able to touch right on your phone. And it's going to go wirelessly into the editor and send that feedback directly in. So that you don't have to create a build to test how sensitive your controls are. And then come back in and bust with an adjustment number and then go back out. You're able to do it right inside the editor, and then once you're ready to do a bit of an install, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, it's just that remote hasn't yet been supported over to Android. That's in process right now. Um, we're going to have that uh, hopefully by Vega 1, which is right around the corner. Um, but that didn't happen before this conference, so it happened. Um, for those who don't know, when you do uh, your scripting inside of Unity, you're using C Sharp and uh, JavaScript. Um, so these are you know, well known languages, but it's not something esoteric or proprietary to Unity. Um, so if you come in, you do your scripting in that, and then you go to your build settings menu. So I just got the flash that I'm in my download file in this one. Okay. Um, but uh, let's get to it because I want to some time for questions. Um, if you go to our build settings menu, you'll notice that it's, you know, again, I'm in one editor, and I've got a lot of choices to choose. I can choose to build a web player out of this game. I can go to the desktop, iPhone, Android. And down here is where we've got the consoles. I've got no dev kit here, and things, so those won't do anything. But in the case of Android, I'm going to want to create a build and have that installed on my device. And this is where if I had a crash helmet, I would put it on because it very in front of an audience. This kind of stuff always goes haywire. So um, you can trust me that I've got nothing pre-installed on my phone here. And I'm going to just hit the it's a build and run. Um, as of today, it's going to do a build and install. It doesn't quite automatically launch it. But it's going to do the compiling the scripts, and then after this, I'll, I'll let my device float around while I um, answer some questions. Um, but it will show that they actually have this demo running on an Android device. Um, and so what this is going to do is just it's building an APK file, and then the editor itself is automatically doing the install onto the device. If for some reason you still wanted to use the terminal window to do your installs, or you get an APK from another developer and you want to do that, uh, you can still go ahead and use that option. Our whole idea is to try and make this as smooth and efficient process as possible. So we're just trying to do this all right inside the editor. Um, and while this turns, um, I'm going to hand this out. I've got a few minutes left. Uh, are there any specific questions that folks have about Unity, about Android, or where we're going with the product? Anyway, let's start over there and we can work our way across. Who are you saying signals? How do you build the UI on that? So how do you build the UI on top of uh, Unity content? We have inside of Unity what's called Unity GUI, uh, which is a currently a completely script-based UI development system. And we also have what are called GUI text and GUI textures. Currently, in the global space, we recommend GUI text and GUI textures because they're a bit lighter weight and less, less uh, performance hungry than our Unity GUI system, which has a lot of automatic state switching and whatnot. But again, with the 3.0 release, we're doing some optimizations of Unity GUI, uh, and we're going to be working eventually on some visual UI development tools. Uh, but in this game that comes up, you're going to see there's going to be dual chunk controls that is done. Uh, there's going to be dual thumb controls uh, that are you know, a basic UI system, a frame rate display that's part of our UI. But it's currently a script-based UI unless you use the GUI text and GUI textures. 
So before I hand this out in an embarrassed way, let me make sure that it's here and launches. So um, it's right there. Can you all see it? Yeah, no, you can't. Can't you? Yeah, it's out there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll do it and launch the app, and um, it says, you know, leave power of the unity right there. Um, if you want to hand that out, let that phone run the folks to check out. And um, it's dual pump stick, left to move, right to shoot. Um, oh, the big camera right here? Oh, okay, Mitchell, can I actually get yeah. it? Yeah. So I will propose if you go down there and then the um, button of the button is you can just run your demo and so if somebody is interested, find just some down there. Oh, okay. Okay. So you can do up uh, down there for the demo. Okay. Um, we have a time to show up here now? Yeah. Just and to just take a look to get in for a quick, yeah. yeah. So uh, here's, you know, the demo is interesting. There's two thumbsticks. Where I just you know, use left to move, and right to shoot. Let's go find some bad guys. And this is going to be an example project that we want to put out, where it's just going to be kind of you know basic scene where uh, you know you have some baddies that want to shoot you, and um, you kill them, and you know, this little red gate would eventually drop, and you, know, you kind of get to a boss level. But um, you know the exciting point is this is Unity content built straight from our editor, installed on the device here in front of you with uh, you know, no hygiene or sort of magic behind it. Um, other than we have to out outside the test of the summer cup of coffee. So, you know, that's, that's Unity running on an Android device. And again, it's about Hawker wants to deploy anywhere, so don't think of this as just Android content. This was our iPhone demo from GDC. The number of changes we had to make to make this work was, were very minimal because there's a scripting API step called iPhone input. This is the class you actually draw the input from. Um, that's obviously not the name we want to use on Android. We're moving to a unified input class that works on both devices so that where things can be common, we want it to be a one-time call. So those are some simple changes, and then it just worked. So the porting up was ridiculously simple, and that's what we want to have you guys as well. So um, that's it going on the demo. I'm just going to plug it back in and show my contact info so people can write it down, and I'm going to clear out this room before they start getting in. So, um, uh, if there's any last questions while we're standing here doing this. Yeah, you have a question? Uh, my question is more about the uh, web player and about user generated content. Is it possible to um, uh, load external content into the community web player? For example, a website where users can upload their content and then the community web player shows that content? So if you're talking about models and meshes, um, the only way to load a like model or geometry of runtime is through a feature called asset bundles. And asset bundles can only be created by the editor. So can you set up a process whereby somebody uploads a model file and then you have a, a, a license of unity on the server because you can do script run it to batch process things to spit out asset bundles? Yes, you can. But it requires that kind of extra hitch, and then you can download the asset bundle and load a runtime. So it's not as, as optimal as we might like it to be, um, but there is a path to it, and we'll try and smooth that out later so that it, it's much easier to do that. Uh, if it's things like textures or other forms of like text-based data, you can most of you can do that with ease today. It's just as long as geometry has to be in our serialized format. Okay, yeah. Um, questions anymore? Um, if you have other questions, contact me. That's all my information right there. Please like email and me on Twitter, so feel free to stop me. Or if I need downstairs, I've got a business card and have to give it out to my phone number and other uh, information. But um, thank you very much. Thank you.